Whoa, what are we doing on 7 Mile in Detroit? Well, I'll tell you, rumor has it that if you speed up to exactly 88 miles per hour after a red light, that you can go all the way to rural southern Illinois. Let's try. Hey, it worked. Wait, there's a seven mile road down here. That must be why we ended up right here. Guess I'll do a video of this area while I'm down here. As always guys, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. In this video, I do show you Alexander County. However, in my last video, I showed you Cairo, Illinois, which is the county seat of Alexander County. Go ahead and check out that video if you haven't already. Why am I showing you Alexander and Pulaski counties? Well, there are some very interesting things to see outside of Cairo in these two counties, as there are a lot of interesting towns, there's an abandoned prison, and there's also a historic site that's pretty neat. Nonetheless, Alexander County is the poorest county in the state of Illinois. The county had a peak population of 25,496 in the 1940 census. Today, the county is home to only 5,500 people. The county is kind of shaped like a ghost. That's kind of ironic. Nearby Pulaski County isn't doing much better than Alexander County, as there are some towns in Pulaski County that I show you in this video as well. Pulaski County had a peak population of 15,875 in 1940, while today it is home to only 5,300 people. That means that in 1940, the two counties had a combined 40,000 people, while today only 10,800 call the two counties home. There are some very sad looking communities in this video that I'm about to show you as there has been many decades of no economic growth in this region. Despite Interstate 57 serving the area and it being near the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Highlighted is the route that I generally take while filming this video. Keep in mind that I do speed up this video quite a bit in order to show you more of the area in a less amount of time. I end up driving almost two hours to make this video. In the description of the video below I show you a timeline of where things are in the video so you can skip ahead if you like. I mentioned this in the Cairo video, and I'll mention it here as well. Illinois politics are fishy, and that's a big reason why Illinois has a larger scale of small towns that are dying than other states. Taxes are heavy here, and other nearby states are much more business friendly, making it hard for these small towns to have good economies. This is Mound City. It is the county seat of Pulaski County, along with nearby Cairo. Mound City had a naval station along the Ohio River during the Civil War. In 1910, Mound City's population peaked at 2,837. Today, Mound City has an estimated 500 people left. 20% of the people in Pulaski County live at or below the poverty line, and the average household income here is $33,000 a year. Unless you're a farmer in this region, or your typical teacher, police officer, it's going to be a struggle to make a living here as hardly any jobs are here, which is unfortunate for the people that live here.
I couldn't help but notice this leaning church steeple on the right. Have to wonder how long it's been that way and how long until it collapses. If you've watched as many Caro videos on YouTube as I have, you'll often come across videos that have a sign that says America and Promised Land. Here's the America sign, and I guess all this place really is is just a few houses along the side of the road. America was the first county seat of Alexander County. Hard to imagine that, as this doesn't look like a town at all. Maybe there used to be one here and it flooded long ago, who knows. However, Pulaski County and Alexander County used to be one county until Pulaski County formed in 1843. Three.
This is Mounds, which is different from nearby Mound City. The town's population peaked in 1920 at 2,661 residents. Today, only about 700 people live here. This just seems like another ghost town or soon to be ghost town. Only a few places remain open. With no signs of the economy jump starting around here, it's hard to see much hope for this area. This region has been in economic decline for at least seven straight decades. This region really just needs help creating and attracting new jobs, and they just simply haven't been getting that help from the state.
This is Klondike. After driving through here, it doesn't seem like it's ever been more than a point on the map, but it does seem like there used to be many more homes on the properties here. This is the Cairo Regional Airport. About 9,000 aircraft operations use the airport throughout the course of a year and 25 per day.
This is Tams. There were never that many people that lived here, peaking at 826 residents in 1980. However, since 1980, about half of the people have left, and only about 450 or so remain. TAMS has only been known for one thing, and that's for its Supermax Correctional Facility that was operated by the state of Illinois. In 2011, Illinois abolished the death penalty, and a few years later, the TAMS Correctional Center closed in 2013, causing the region to lose even more jobs. And here it is, the TAMS Correctional Center. There are plenty of videos online of people exploring the abandoned prison if you want to see more of the inside of it. The prison was reported to have terrible conditions for inmates and was only at 50% of its capacity. Officials decided that the prison was no longer needed, so now it sits here vacant and away from everything else. This is Olive Branch. Wikipedia says 800 people live here, but Niche.com says 460 people live here. Regardless, it's a small town, with a dollar general and not much else. Property values here, however, definitely seem to be higher than other nearby communities.
This is Thebes, the place that used to be the county seat of Alexander County. It was moved to Cairo in 1860. Thebes is named after the Egyptian city just like Cairo is named after the Egyptian city of Cairo. This area of southern Illinois is called Little Egypt as it has very fertile farmland reflecting that of the Nile Delta region in Egypt. Here is the original Alexander County Courthouse. Abraham Lincoln practiced law here back in the day. Thebes was a busy steamboat port back in the day. The town's population peaked at 857 in 1920. Today, only 330 people live here. As you can tell, it seems like this used to be where the town was. Many floods have wiped out. Many floods have wiped out all of the vulnerable buildings. You can tell that floods happen here often as it is along the Mississippi River and there are no levees for protection. There's also signs of flood debris across this empty dirt grid of streets.
This is East Cape Girardeau, as Cape Girardeau, Missouri is just on the other side of the Mississippi River. You have to wonder how often this town floods with it being built in the flat floodplain of the Mississippi River. There are plenty of lots to put trailers on in this town for a living, but there also seems to be some decent looking houses. Seems to be the nicest place in Alexander County to live, probably because of its close proximity to Cape Girardeau. Last but not least, this is McClure, home to 300 people. It doesn't seem like this place was ever a town that had a thousand people or more, like some of the others that we visited. Wikipedia, however, says that there used to be two train stations here and a decent downtown. Those seem to be long gone as the buildings today look to be in poor shape, with only a few of them occupied.
Well, that's about it for this video. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. We'll see you next time. Peace!